No. So yeah. Hello, I am willing to bet that you and I have two things in common. Firstly, our stunning good looks naturally, stunning good looks naturally, and secondly, the fact we both have nerves. And I'm not talking these nerves, I'm talking these nerves. Nerves make up your body's nervous system, and the way they get your body to move is hugely complicated. So complicated, I even read a research paper on it, and by read, I mean skimmed the first two lines and immediately became an expert like any person on the internet. In short, your brain produces electrical signals that travel down your motor neurons. Not these motors, these motors, which stimulates your muscles, causing movement and allowing you to grip things. But look at the inefficiency of this movement. I mean, come on guys, you've got to move your shoulder, your elbow, and then your hand? And then you have to think? I mean, think, how much energy is that taking? I mean, I don't know because I didn't read the paper, but still, it's effort regardless. Clearly, there needs to be a solution that gets rid of all this flesh stuff. So I've devised a three-step plan, and step one is a robotic arm. Your human arm has three points of rotation. Your shoulder, with mine being freakishly flexible after years of swimming, your elbow, and your wrist. The arm I'm going to make is going to emulate that, and we're going to start with this beautiful sketch I made. What is that? What, what is that? What is that? Now, I know what you're thinking. What the hell does this sketch mean? Your art skills suck. Okay, disagree. But I have made a computer-aided design version just for you, not for me. This artistic masterpiece tells me everything I need to know. The arm starts with a box, but not just any box. I've incorporated a touchscreen. Wow. And a servo motor. The touchscreen actually connects to a Raspberry Pi, which if I plug in, I can actually write a script for the servo motor to allow for some movement. This type of motor I'm using differs from a typical DC motor because it has an integrated feedback loop which allows it to communicate its position to itself. It means I can tell the servo to go to a specific position in the code which is going to be really useful behavior a bit later once I get electrical impulses involved. But let's be honest, rotating air, it's not really that useful. What did he say? So instead we're going to be rotating this servo which is connected to a little case I tweeted pointed. This is going to be our rotation point for our primary arm, which is this janky thing here. And you might notice the arm has been a little bit discombobulated from two seconds ago. But I can explain. I didn't destroy it for fun. I've actually gone about fixing up some of the internal wiring within the system. Look at the mess! And it wouldn't even have got a mention had I not accidentally done this. Can't see it? Let me zoom in quickly. Yeah, that is a burn mark uh, caused by me accidentally blowing up the board in testing. You donkey! The power routing on this board is now just completely screwed, so for the past three days I have been cooking up a solution. About six months ago, a very kind-hearted viewer actually bought this for me, which is just a cheaper version of the previous board we were using, and it has all the functionality I actually need. So I picked up some header pins with these really long metal bits, yes, very technical, I know, that fit through these pinholes very nicely. I started hard soldering these, but my flatmate, who just completed a 12-week internship, where he basically sat and soldered for 12 weeks straight, thought he could do a better job. This channel's name might be Robot Cuss, but it may as well be Robot Cuz I Suck at Soldering. Clinton level joke there, because he did do a, a much better job than me. I did have to change the backplate design a few times to get this fitting into the overall arm, and although that was annoying, it's actually a little bit of a blessing in disguise. And it's because of these two things, an electromyography sensor and an analog to digital converter chip, which together make up part two of my three-step plan. When you close your hands, turn your neck, or even rotate your shoulders, your brain is sending an electrical impact pulse through your nerves to your body. Just like in a wire, for that electricity to flow, there has to be a difference between two points, a potential difference, or just a voltage. Stick on these electrodes, wire yourself up, and we can measure this. But this raw voltage is absolutely tiny, and it has to be. Imagine giving your significant other a hug and you get shocked. Of course, this doesn't happen, because they don't exist, but also because the voltage generated on the surface of their skin is in the microvolt range. Not these volts, or even these volts, these volts. 
Point is, the signal's so small you've got to amplify and then filter it before it's of any use. I know this because three months ago I actually made one of these electromyography sensors, and then I stored it in my closet for three months underneath my towel and let it pick up an unhealthy amount of dust, so one of those things, no idea which, caused it to break. This line here is representing the voltage being detected across my arm when my hand is at rest. When I make a little action, you can see that it goes up and that's really good, but notice how there's like this generic just offset. That's not great because it's raising the voltage level up and it's meaning that when I make a big gesture using these massive forearm muscles I've developed over my life, it actually is clipping the signal and that's losing the information. When I then integrate an AI system into this to classify these signals, which is the third step of the project, uh, it's gonna collapse. It's not gonna know one gesture from another because every gesture is gonna look so different. So I've grabbed a cheaper one off of AliExpress and once I connect it to my skin, set up a code and hook up the ADC, we get a less problematic reading. Because of those long pins I soldered, I've managed to turn this screen into a touch screen while still taking inputs from the EMG sensor and sending outputs to my servo motors. That's allowed me to develop an app to run on the microcontroller. Each point of rotation or servo motor has its own slider associated with it. So when I drag these sliders, we can move between zero and 90 degrees and minus 90 degrees. To be perfectly honest, this app doesn't have a huge amount to do with using your nerves to drive the arms, but let's be pretty damn honest, this is pretty damn cool. Ignore the jittering as well that it does every so often. It's just a little bit camera shy. I will be tying this app into the EMG sensor somehow later into this video, but look at this. This is, this is, this is, it's cool. That will probably break my servo if I continue doing that. Now I know what you're thinking. This user interface is a little bit boring. So let's just add this in. Happy or perhaps a return to the classics or perhaps even real art. Ah, perfect. I've adapted the app to use a selection based system. So now you can select whichever servo you want to move. Use the slider just like before, but also you can actually move it using the EMG sensor. Right now it's just going to send it to a predetermined angle. There you go. So we're using 45 degrees. I'll do it for the other servo as well. Yeah. Success. I was going to use just an AI model and the EMG sensor to get the arm moving, but actually I much prefer the touchscreen app working in conjunction with the EMG sensor. Friendship ended with AI. Now app is my best friend. I also get to use the sensor I built instead of the one from AliExpress because it's better for this very specific purpose. Apps and EMGs are good and all, but if we actually want to grip water, we're going to need some sort of gripper. I've taken one of our more powerful motors and created this structure. It pushes these two gripper points out, which of course doesn't actually grip anything. But I used to have very long hair, like last month. I promise this is relevant. And that means I have hair bands. A lot of hair bands. See, if I add a hair band, that restoring force due to the elasticity of the hair band can be our gripping force. Nice. Now I can just move the servo and... Prepare for trouble. Make it double. Absolutely. Useless. I've taken some time to research how to make gears and learned that mathematically correct gears that mesh perfectly are near impossible to make, especially on a 3D printer, but you can get pretty close. I designed these boys, which are the first set of circular gears that I've actually designed that mesh properly together. These gears are connected straight to the servo motor and as this one here spins, it moves this gear. Success. It's a bit simple, but it has got some pretty decent power behind it. I mean, this mug is... No. Well, I was pretty confident that was going to work, but it didn't. I'm thinking the issue is to do with the strength of the grip, because even this Megalite bottle could hardly be gripped, and the moment we add water, it's just going to drop it. So I designed these big gears, and you know what they say about big gears. A big torque, specifically three times the torque. There's boring maths behind it, but for accepting that the gripper arm is going to be moving a third of the previous speed, 
we're gonna get three times as strong a system as we previously had. Thing is, by spinning both of these gears off the same servo head, the gears annoyingly spin in different directions, so this design's a good place to start, but ultimately meets its fate in the never going to manufacture folder. But look at it from a different angle, specifically this angle. To get better gripping, all we need is a stronger compressive force, and theoretically we can achieve it by creating a complex gripper of loads of moving parts that I definitely didn't just blatantly rip off designs off the interwebs, but after all, there's only so many ways to fit a square into a circle. Or at least, that's what I tell myself. That's where this comes in. Sometimes my genius is... It's almost frightening. The thing is, it doesn't exactly work very well, and it's not because it's not moving, it's just driving gears and arms simultaneously takes a bit more juice than the battery and butt converter can give. If I take these middle arms out though, we get a better result. Our power is still a bit iffy, but big step in the right direction here. Grip force still wasn't great though, so I designed this new one. Liar! It do work pretty well though. And there's water in there as well. Oh yeah! The final thing I need to do before we're ready to answer the age-old question in the title, that I guess isn't exactly an age-old question because I only asked it 11 minutes ago, is to assemble the secondary arm. This is a much shorter arm and it just gives a little bit more dynamic movement and range to this absolute masterpiece of a robotic arm. So uh, I'm definitely biased here, but uh, this is starting to get pretty damn cool. Just using the app from before, I'm just sliding the slider and the gripper goes in, it goes out, side to side, ignore all the jittering and duct tape, we're calling those features. Oh man, this is so cool. Oh yeah, <laughs> Why do I keep making that noise? Clearly, I am at the end of my mental rope with this project, so win or lose, work or fail, this is it. All right, good start. I expanded the app for all five servos, by the way. Uh, so let's start moving. I'm also just gonna use my mouse because I can't be bothered to use the touch screen. All right, good, okay, good start, good start. Uh, next servo. <laughs> Wrong way. Gonna go servo four, rotate final one here. Okay. Go down. Oh no, look! Oh, wow, the bottle magically moved. Hello, Gripper? No. To fix that, all I needed to do was just tighten the internal screws of the Gripper. This happens uh, quite often. Okay. Alright, I'm so confident this is gonna work. I'm taking off the cap. <laughs> Alright, that is now live water next to a live electronically powered circuit. Hopefully, I don't mess this up. Uh... Yes! <laughs> God. Ooh, ooh, look how it's working. Oh my God, that EFG's not working. <laughs> All right, screw this. The answer is no. You know, there's lessons in failure. I gotta go to the gym now, so uh, <laughs> I see you aren't subscribed. <laughs> Bye.